Hi everyone, welcome to Ahmed Academy. In this video, I want to cover the 3D morphology of the permanent maxillary first premolars. These are posterior to the canines and anterior to the molars. Maxillary premolars possess a well-formed palatal cusp in place of the cingulum which we usually find in the anterior teeth. Most maxillary first premolars have two roots and two canals, precisely 74% of them do, and they erupt at the age of 10 to 11 years, with their root being completely formed by the age of 12 to 13 and with root development we've seen this coming up in previous videos as well and usually takes between two to three years and it's a question that comes up in exams frequently and as always we'll look into the morphology from different angles such as the buccal palatal mesial and the distal view however I'll also cover the occlusal view towards the end of this video as I believe it can be helpful for this tooth so the tooth you're looking at right now is the left maxillary first premolar. From the buccal view, looking at the mesial cusp, the mesial slope is longer than the distal slope, though sometimes the mesial and distal slopes can be symmetrical. This places the buccal cusp tip distal to the line bisecting the buccal surface of the crown. The mesial outline of the crown is more curved than the distal outline and the distal contact point is more occlusally placed than the mesial contact point. The crown is trapezoidal in shape. The root is three to four millimeters shorter than the canine, but from this angle, they show resemblance in shape and form. Moving on to the palatal view, from this aspect, we can observe that the crown tapers palatally. Because the palatal cusp is narrower than the buccal cusp, it is possible to see some part of the mesial and distal aspects. Palatal cusp is also shorter than the buccal cusp, allowing us to see the slopes of both cusps from this one view. The palatal portion of the root or the palatal surface of the palatal root is smooth and convex at all points. The apex tend to be blunt compared to the buccal root. Looking at the mesial view, from this aspect we can observe that the tips of the cusps are within the confines of the root trunks. What this means is that if you drew a line either side of the roots, the cusp tips would lie in between those lines. The buccal cusp tips on the other hand is directly below the center of the buccal root, whilst the palatal cusp is on a line with the palatal border of the palatal root. The buccal cusp is also longer, wider than the palatal cusp and pointed like the canine. But most importantly, a mesial developmental depression is located directly vertical to the mesial contact area and bordered by the mesial buccal and the mesial palatal line angles is a distinguishing feature of this tooth. What this essentially means is that this concavity, uh, which starts from the contact area and ends at the bifurcation here is special to the mesial side of the maxillary first premolar and it's a key feature that can help you distinguish between what premolar you're working with. If you look at the distal view, the distal view is more convex whilst the mesial view is more concave giving you that uh, obvious mesial developmental depression to help you distinguish what premolar you're working with. Moving on to the distal view, it is very similar to the mesial aspect, only with the following variations. As mentioned before, there's no developmental depression or groove on this aspect. Instead, it is very convex at almost all points. The curvature of the cervical line is less on this aspect, and the contact area is at the junction of the occlusal and middle third. And finally, looking at the tooth from the occlusal aspect, from this view, we can observe that the crown appears hexagonal, the crown is wider on the buccal side than on the palatal side. The buccal palatal dimension of the crown is greater than the mesial distal dimension. And on the mesial side, the central groove joins that developmental depression that we spoke about on the mesial side, as you can see on the occlusal surface. And with that being said, this brings us to the end of the video. So well done if you made it this far. Please consider leaving a like if you found this video helpful and subscribe for more videos like this. All the graphics that we used in this video video the credit goes to the university of dundee all the sources that made this video possible their links can be found in the description section below and i'll catch you guys in the next one